I sat down with Seth again. We had a great time last year when we chatted, and this one goes a little bit further. If you haven't already listened to our first interview, check that out. You should see a little floating thing here. If not, it's in the description. But Seth and I go into a wide variety of topics here. How might ancient fungi have interacted with early human civilizations and our understanding of consciousness? Is there a shadow biome controlling humanity? Is this the non-human intelligence that we all interact with? Does DMT play a role? What about Neanderthal genetics? And very much more on this one. Strap in. It's going to be a wild ride. Also, the audio might be a little messed up on this for me anyway. I uh, didn't have the microphone connected correctly and it was pulling from the camera. Tried to fix it, but it is what it is. So, <laughs> how's it going, happening? man? <laughs> Muzzle <talk. laughs> Yeah, right, right. How, how you been? Uh, good, good. Kind of busy. Uh, like in weird ways, though. Like I hooked up with a few... A few new people interested in what I'm doing uh, on the longer end of the theories. Um, somebody really high up in my book, anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if they want to be named yet. So it's it's this like the one thing I'm kind of sketchy on. But um, there, yeah. you know them. Oh, I know. Like, them oh, personally. you. Oh, you. Well, I, I wouldn't I know say who personally. Who they, I know who they are. Very much. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the circles that we've been in. Yeah, sure, oh. dude. Yep. Uh, wow. somebody really high up. They ran a lab that everybody knows about. Um, Maybe they and... have me blocked. <laughs> no, no. They're one of the oh, good ones, okay. dude. No, they're oh, one of okay. the good ones. Okay. Yeah, I got into some, and what we could talk about this, like, kind of poking the bear without directly stating names or anything, too, but yeah. um, I got I got hit by a couple money guys that, like, In came out. a good way me. or a bad way? Like, a good, a good way. Bad. It's kind of slow so far. I'll put it that okay. way. You know, we'll talk about it more during the show, but um, yeah, okay, dude. we'll talk about it right now. Okay, this is the show, Steph. You're back. All right, hey. all right, all right. Let's just get going then. Yeah, let's sure, just sure. get going. You're back. Thanks for coming back. It's been a yeah. long time. Yeah, totally, man. I'm over a year now. Yeah, a lot's it's been happened. over a year now. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, I still get hit up all the time. Seth, I got all these questions for Seth. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. You know, it's like I'm I'm pretty easy to reach. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. DM whatever on tw- on Twitter or. We got that mm-hmm. Telegram thing going too. I know some people don't like Telegram. I'm just there for the, you know, the people that are trying to follow along with like my theories on phenomenon right. stuff and the protocol and uh, like we share we share a lot of data on there. It's really cool actually. It's like a pretty heavy open research group mm-hmm. approach. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about yeah. last year. Actually, I've just been expanding on that. It's like almost Sweet. 600 people now that we're just wow. kind of all throwing ideas back and forth and. You know, if there's like a gap in the data that we haven't looked at yet, we'll find it together and kind of parse through everything as a big group. Sweet. So cool, that's cool. cool. And, and that runs the gamut, too. That's from like the biology side that we're looking at for the disease stuff I've been talking about all the way up through, you know, some of the, the deeper stuff with, um, you know, I don't want to call it like secret stuff, but it's phenomenon stuff for sure. You know, like some of these yeah, uh, yeah. lucid dream things that I've talked about in the right. past, there's a, a, a little clearer uh, path, I think, to to maybe where some of that is coming from, or maybe what what they're looking at in the larger groups out there, like government wise and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those mm-hmm. those rumors you hear, like they're kind of looking for or aware of a certain thing that's happening. Right. You know, whether right. it's genetics or you know, everyone's trying to figure that part out. Um, I I think it's kind of a big mishmash, which is why it's hard to hard for them to even pinpoint to the public what they're really hiding not hiding but like what they're not sure how to tell everybody you know right. I, I you know i think you know um guys that have kind of looked at this before you know for for a while we kind of know like you know i'm coming into some of this stuff new don't get me wrong but there's a mm-hmm. lot of it that i was fairly aware of before you know it's like you kind of get right. used to hearing oh this is going to get dropped or this is going to get disclosed you know over the years and you just kind of don't really think much of it uh, but these guys are kind of you know, holding a bag and not really knowing how to explain it to people that mm-hmm. it's not what you think. Um, like I kind of hammered that home o- over the last, you know, year plus on Twitter that it's really right. not going to be all about the nuts and bolts stuff. You know, yeah. it, it diverges heavily from that. And that's kind of what people got drilled into to looking for is this, you know, is this a species that's like way ahead of us? Is it from, mm-hmm. you know, what Alpha Centauri or something, you know, who knows where it comes from, but that's what we're all expecting. You know, we yeah, see yeah, these yeah. saucers and these orbs and these tic tacs and whatnot. I'm mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking more of it's terrestrial than anything at this point, where I've gotten mm-hmm. to with my research. 
you know, whether it's a uh, breakaway species stuff like we talk about sometimes, or, you know, I, I've really kind of taken a, a little more of a dive into that ultra consciousness or like super consciousness theory too. Um, right, the, the information, the consciousness, super highway. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. But the fungal mm -hmm. version. Yeah. Um, right, right. Actually. Yeah. You know, let's spin that for a second, man. Cause that's, yeah, that's yeah. been a, a thread of mine lately. I've been pulling on pretty hard. Um, yeah. Because the, so, the fungal superhighway exists in the biology biology standard, right? For example, you know, um, the way that the fungus communicates over vast majorities of, of just a physical area on Earth, right? It's even funny where um, my good friend, she's been, you know, uh, into plants forever, right? And she's, you know, worked in that industry for like 30 years, uh, you know, basically for everything right so i bought a tree she's like here here you gotta take these things like what are they and there's like there's like i don't know five or ten different kinds of fungus then these little tiny capsules right and you put them in the bottom you dig a hole for the tree you're gonna put in you put those in the bottom and then you put the tree in there and basically what that does is it like it, it's fungus that reaches out and grabs other nutrients and shit from the soil or from wherever else and communicates hey and connects it to this tree root right and then helps the tree flourish in, in like shitty soil or wherever right it helps yeah. bring the nutrients to the tree and does it and that's all fungal base right so it reaches out through this vast vast network of underground whatever's going on and pulls all the shit in and it's like but then i've seen research where that shit goes for miles and miles and miles and miles they don't even know how long oh yeah it's, right? right oh yeah and you can kind of run with that pretty far too you know, mm -hmm. and that's actually, you kind of brought up a good point we should touch on before we dive into that. Um, yeah. There, there are, you know, hugely varied versions of fungi. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of right. people early on when I started presenting this theory publicly, a lot of people just jumped to thinking toadstools, you know, and that's really not it. Um, I mean, that's <laughs> part of the picture, obviously, but it's not right. the part I focus on. It's not the part that I see as like a kind of negative impact on mankind the, the biome the human biome for sure uh you know microbiome it's, it's, it's not the portobellas right <laughs> no 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 we're not yeah we're, i mean hopefully you're not shoveling spoonfuls of candida uh, or cryptococcus i keep making that joke but it's not a joke you know it's kind of like well uh, you know it's, it's worth knowing that they are you know they're what you think of as a as a fungus they've got you know networks mycelial networks that that interlink mm -hmm. and and they have uh, some of these are pretty weird though they have weird um reading capabilities like a bunch of like plus plus minus minus all these weird combinations that they can go through uh wow. to yeah and and you'll see these uh genetic variants within a host there'll be ones that have gone to some area and they kind of run back into things through the endothelial pathways and whatnot and getting into the places they set up they'll meet again and then they kind of share that information about where those resources are in the host and then it helps tune the whole colony to wow. new stuff they haven't seen before it's like those like slime old subway maps it's that same deal that we've talked about so yeah. those are the those are the ones i kind of focus on they're mm -hmm. um considered dimorphic um and this kind of leads in a way to what you're what you're getting at with these larger organisms so in right. the body these ones that i look at will set up this mycelial network in you yeah. and it's doing its own thing it's separate you know it's uh, jokingly referred to as amoeba in a tube you know because it's like one kind of interconnected tube but a bunch of uh, nuclei and mitochondria going around and they're almost like a you know blood cells of their own um so it's, that's it's all like built invading the host right it's like it's like yeah and it's quiet too it's yeah. really quiet like i you know um a lot of people think oh you know you, you would know if you have a problem with candida no you don't really it's it's considered commensal you know to our biome which means it's, it's not like, like, like putting you in a bed you, you have some crippling disease where it's you know like you know knocking you down and you're in bed right and you get out like you know unless i mean as we talked about before you have a pre-existing immunocompromised system right yeah and that's where you really notice it it really will blast you out pretty good if you're in a, a case like the apes and stuff we've talked about yeah. uh familial candidiasis and so on um you know, I'm finding now, though, because we're kind of heading in the direction we want to talk about cryptococcus a little bit and how that's kind of maybe doing a thing that's a, a little more than what we realize uh, on the surface. So it kind of sets up shop in the brain, and it does a bunch of these processes that that pull nutrients from the host, like you would think a fungus is doing. That's kind of what it's known for doing out in the environment, like you were saying with that tree and exchanging the nutrients. Well, right. the difference with commensal is it provides no benefit to the host. 
<sighs> you can't find cryptococcus like providing the host benefit in the brain. In fact, it's doing damage the whole time, even right. if it's not like full blown cryptococcosis. And they're finding now that these things are able to disseminate right from your lung to your brain directly. They, they keep fractionalizing their size, John. So they go from the mother daughter scenario that we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. There's an extra step I kind of poked around about on online, you know, my, in my post and whatnot with these extracellular vesicles that come up. Um, they, they term them a seed cell when they're coming out of cryptococcus. So it's like it goes mother, daughter, mm-hmm. seed cell, which is just this tiny little fragment, but it's still bioactive. You know, it still has like coding RNA and the virulence factors like cryptococcus case. It would be like urease, lacase, things like that to kind of give it benefit for metabolism. Um, and it still has its own lipid membrane, just like the mother cell would. So is it is it basically the way of propagating it being a seed cell? It's trying to spore and, you know, probably not yeah. the correct term. Like the damage to... is already kind of happening, yeah. like that tuning of yeah. the host or the host immune response anyway is already mm-hmm. happening from these seed cells. So when the cryptococcus, you know, the larger cells get up there and start breaching that uh, astrocyte junction that keeps the blood brain barrier together, it starts splitting that open. You know, even with these seed cells, they can breeze right through there and it gets sticky. It's like a, a it's a polysaccharide really is what it is. I keep saying lipopolysaccharide, but it's a polysaccharide. GXM is the term with cryptococcus. And it has this uh, kind of charge to it and a stickiness to it. And it will clog up those little parts that usually the astrocytes are holding together. It kind of forces them apart and puts them in a reactive state. So now you're getting inflammation in like astroglia, right, in the core of your brain. So Jeez. those... Um, paravascular areas that kind of get ballooned out in a lot of experiencer cases. Well, guess what cryptococcus does when it's in your brain. And oh, it's one so of the few that can pass the blood brain barrier like that too. Uh, well, bacteria. Not many things, I mean, forgive me for being ignorant, but there's not many things that can pass the blood brain barrier. No, um, there's not. I mean, there's, it's like the whole holy grail for medicine, I think, isn't it? At some point to try to figure out a way to pass the blood brain barrier because yeah. Um, I think cancer, if you have cancer in the brain, it's really hard to, to treat because of that. Yep. You can't really get an injection, right? And then pass it to your brain to give it some type of treatment. So that's like a, you know, I don't know if they can use those as a pathway, potentially, you know, using this for good instead of evil, these bastards, but I don't know. Yeah, some of, that, of them I just don't see. It. Yeah, I just don't see where they where they benefit. This is this group of fungi too, by the way. And they're they're kind of too. It's nothing else that does that fungi. Fun, fungi. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's it's strange the way it does it in our body is what I okay. would say. It's odd. It stands out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they're they're tuned pretty well to you know warm blooded mammalian bi- biology and stuff. But when you look at what they're doing, and I say they, you know, it's Cryptococcus species, Candida species, Vasarium. There's a bunch of them. These genera mm-hmm. um, in these groupings, they are kind of doing the same rough thing to our biology mm-hmm. they're they're going in for lesions you know in the in the genome they have some epigenetic stuff they do you know with certain chemistries they put out so then you've got some tagging going on um so you could have things that you wouldn't even recognize as a you know inborn in my case or i think most people at this point um inborn damage from the toxin the toxin exposure uh, especially mm-hmm. in the womb that's showing up more and more now where you have a test of amniotic fluid Mm-hmm. So inside, you know, that, that barrier also like the blood brain barrier should be kind okay. of its thing. No, right. No, they test it. There's Fusarium in there. There's Aspergillus in there. Sometimes can Candida is not showing up as much as I would expect it, but it is in there. So where I'm going with this is these things kind of get ingrained and these fungal highways that you talk about, these large organisms being part of mm-hmm. are happening inside you. You're like that stratum that it wants to mm-hmm. use that, that substrate. You know, you're it. the host. Yeah, you're the host, right? You're the yeah, substrate right. it's pulling from. It's like, you know, thinking about how they work out in the environment. Mm-hmm. And now it's just doing that in your body instead. You know, that's the big difference there. But this, the, the thing that's really interesting about the ones I focus on is that radio element mm-hmm. that we've kind of talked about a little bit before, right. where they're, yeah. they're, they're tuned to not just exist, but thrive after exposure to radiation. Um, and that makes it, you know. So if you do have a cancer and you're getting treated with radiation, yeah, that's well, what's the first they thing that comes it. back? You know what I mean? You see that a lot when you look at the cancer cases that are, you know, you, you can have a tumor, say, removed and that right. uh, post-surgical radiation treatment to try and make sure that things don't come back. Uh, a lot of times you'll see, you know, issues with fungi 
you know, candida or, or other things that set up shop in those areas, you know, cryptococcus sometimes are certain immune disorders. Um, mm -hmm. But what I'm getting at with this whole mycelial thing, um, you, you bring up these large masses out in the environment. So you look at that, uh, and I brought this up on another interview recently, but it's worth dropping here. There's mm -hmm. that um, large kind of mycelial growth mat that's under that big stand of trees, I think out in the Pacific Northwest, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's kind of been assigned like a semblance of consciousness, like for sure. Mm. Um, it, it kind of is having chemical signaling and electrical signaling and what you would think of looking like brainwaves of a, of a sort. Um, and it's known, you know, there's, I, I actually, um, I don't have it with me, but I'll, I'll give you something to show later on here yeah. that, uh, it is a little list going around of, of traits that are considered cognitive traits that are shown by fungi. Hmm. It's just a, you know, just a chart left, chart, right. Yeah. Here's, here's this species here, what it shows. Um, and you can kind of see that in, in some of these species I look at. So that same idea of this communication in a mycelial mass uh, is kind of taking place inside the body to a degree, you know, and we were talking to this kind of thought experiment, kind of talking with my wife the other night, you know, so let's run this theory out to its extension. All right. So we know, you know, like a hundred million to 60 million years ago, roughly is when a lot of the species I deal with started showing up heavily, uh, mm -hmm. but fungi have been around. You know, for right. a long time, um, I think the first thing to really hit land to colonize it correctly was a fungus. And it was about a, a billion years ago. Wow. But they were also the first thing to move in the water with a flagellum. So they developed mm. a flagellum to move through the water. They were the first thing, you know, um, in that manner. Other things were alive before them. But so you have this really ancient form of life that now we assign levels of consciousness to the way it behaves, you know, by our own metric, uh, mm -hmm. which is very anthropocentric, of course, but, um, you know, we have this metric of, okay, this is what we believe consciousness or, or cognition should look like. And we apply right. that and we don't really go outside that box. Mm -hmm. If you take it outside that box, you could have something that is, you know, say a billion years. All right. The first thing to hit land. All right. Um, that one has just kept itself kind of propagated that whole right. billion years for all right. you and I know. And right. now we're talking about stuff where, you know, you can go back to some of the fun stuff or like legendary things that are references to this. Um, like Nordic legends, they have uh, this stuff called Eter, E-I-T-R. And that's like the substance that's underground. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the core of what the earth is made of. You know, life is made of like the, the, um, Jotun and everything else that are the big giants and their stories, which kind of preceded oh, right. mankind. Those came out of this Itter stuff. So it was yeah. there before anything that we would recognize as part of these you know, old verbal stories, old verbal records mm -hmm. that got passed on. Um, this thing could have been there, you know, forever, millions, millions of years, millions and millions of years functioning as, you know, some form of I'm doing, I'm, I'm acquiring something. I'm keeping myself alive for some reason. This this whole, existence it gets really into like the cthulhu realm yeah. you know like these ancient old gods we wouldn't recognize as anything that's even interact you know even... something yeah you can't interact with it it's so colossal mm -hmm. of an idea you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you apply that to some of the stuff we're hearing about you know phenomenon and influence against mankind and everything and yeah, that makes way more sense yeah oh yeah because you know these things have the ability to change our genome um, you know, again, the epigenetic stuff I just mentioned a moment ago, that's yeah. all happening. So that kind of fits that piece, you know, because we hear that a, a lot. It's um, mobile because it's inside it's, of you and it's moving around. Right. Well, and the other thing, too, is if you think about this, around. it's out in the environment everywhere. Yeah, People we talked about that earlier on. That's what I was like thinking out when I first I was like, Seth, I'll get this out of me. Like, dude, as soon as you walk outside you gotta back yeah in. you yeah you can't yeah you can't be concerned with that part no no yeah, yeah that's yeah. And, and people do get stuck in that loop i've seen it a yeah. lot in the group and stuff and sharing that it's yeah. like it's a momentary thing and then you kind of yeah. realize like okay i need to take care of what's going on in here yeah. and not worry about the rest of it um you know but these ideas of consciousness you know they kind of end up being like a non-local consciousness um uh, non-local yeah. non-human consciousness basically and that fits that bill of this you know ultra consciousness thing these what we've termed as gods and we've called them different mm -hmm. things 
know, mm-hmm. different generations of man have called them whatever, you know, angels, gods, uh, demons, all these different names for them. It's the same thing over yeah. and over and over. It's the same thing, you know, that we're mm-hmm. just giving them different names. Um, and now we're calling them, you know, ETs or NHIs or whatever it would be. But that's, it's, it's still, some of these fit that same idea. You know, they, well, they can, that makes a lot of sense because you it, it, it just it takes that whole paradigm and pushes it away. So race, creed, religion, it doesn't matter. It, you're affected by it. You just call it something different. Right. But it, yeah, it affects the yeah. whole entire planet. Right. I mean, that's. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. everywhere. You know, you go mm-hmm. and like I say, you know, dig a. You can't get away from it. No, there's no, no way you, to get rid of it. Right. Like, no. What what you what you really, you know, in, in my estimation, and this is what we focus on in the group, too, is, you know, kind of immune modulation. You know, biomodulation, so that mm-hmm. it's not really as as active in in the host. And we've seen the re- the results on that. You know, I've seen uh, some labs that showed on your analysis certain ones that you would look for, like aflatoxins and fusariums and things like that. Yeah. Um, some of their toxins that are with those those genera um, going down by half. Wow. Yeah, and that's within like a two month period. So somebody was just testing out the protocol stuff that I've kind of laid out for people to check out on their own. Um, yeah. so it is effective. We had one person recently in the group that came back with zeros unheard of. It's wow. completely unheard of. Uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it can't happen at all or hasn't happened at all. It's just, I haven't seen yeah. it out there. A lot of my clinical contacts that I talk to they're they're like, no, it shouldn't be like that. There's an acceptable range for a reason. And right. there's this bottomed out. And these are the hmm. species that I'm talking about with, to you that are, you know, they're, they're build commensal, but they strictly are damaging the host and acquiring resources. And they have a lot of tricks to do it too, mm-hmm. you know? So while I mean, they're in there past that blood brain barrier, bro, I mean, that's, it's massive, right? I mean, that's, a, that's, yeah. that's a big, that's a big, big deal. I mean, and that, a, I think it's a bigger deal than most people realize. I mean, it's huge. Well, it fits a lot of pieces of what we hear with, um, and again, these are different terms that get passed around. So bear with me, but mm-hmm. you hear terms of like possessions, mm-hmm. abductions, these, you know, uh, you know, emotional events whatever you want to call them you know some people would would take it as kind of a breakdown sometimes you know Mm -hmm. of just you know Mm -hmm. what am i seeing what am i dealing with in these events um what's interesting about these particular fungi is they get right into the area of the brain where we do our cognitive mapping there you go so it's our cognitive map so now anything that's that's coming in for sensory or motor input is going to be jumped affected yeah, yeah cuz they're in that same exact region. Uh it's it's the it's in the hippocampus but it's the CA1 group of neurons. Um those those kind of are known for being part of that initial stage of input and and decoding what's happening. The other thing that's in that same group of neurons is your memory building. Mm-hmm. That's how you build your long-term memories. So you could also <laughs> if you have the right influence on stuff and you know what you're doing enough in some degree, and I say know what you're doing, um, mm. you know, this is just going from the NHI ultra consciousness, right. like controlling aspect we hear about with the phenomenon. Um, you could have that there ready to go. Because mm-hmm. you have access so, to it and you can yeah. make it be whatever you want. Yeah, you know, those mask memories and stuff that we yeah. talk about out there, um, right. you know, those do come up a lot. And it's, that's where I think it comes back to like you and I have talked about a lot where this is more of a psi thing. Mm-hmm. There's something right. like, influencing part there. of us yeah yeah that, and, that we don't we can't really put our put our finger on because it's not yet yeah, a, yeah, yeah at the moment right, right? i you mean know, it's, it's like a phys- like a physical thing i can't blame yeah russia or china yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean right like I right oh yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 i can't like you can't grab somebody and you know say that they're responsible for it it could be a you know in the in the, you know that term gets tossed around i think dr Eric davis tossed it you know the shadow biome, and I think Blue Elizondo, I think, dropped that once or twice as well. That you know, there could be a shadow biome, you know, and be, they just kind of flew everybody's head. But you know, this would this would be the only thing in my mind that would probably enter that realm. You know, that could that's a, it, it's basically what we're describing here. It's a shadow biome. It's, it's, yeah. it's existing within you, within everybody, within the entire planet, but it's not visible, right? It's not something right. that you're consciously. Yeah, it's funny consciously, it's, but yeah, it's not something we consciously, you know, considering. Right? It's yeah, and it's like we're screened out of some of it too, mm. at like receptor levels and and so on. Um, you know, so so one piece with the the neurons and and particularly cryptococcus, a couple of other species do get in there off the back of that blood brain barrier being breached. They start mm-hmm. kind of setting up co residents, especially like certain bacteria and whatnot. Um, but 
the memory aspects and that motor and sensory aspects, you know, those are, those are pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you can see how that would match yeah. a lot of what we're talking about, but then you have sure. this other aspect where you've got um, an issue with like being frozen in place, sleep paralysis with these abductions, you can't move, you can only move your eyes right. around. That kind of gets reported quite a bit, you know, on the negative yeah. abductions for sure. Yeah. Um, I see that as being part of this whole deal with the, and we've talked about this a little bit, microtubules and the way that, that those work. Um, mm-hmm. And this can, you know, at least at, at the initial on, onset of these things, um, if somebody were to have an experience that causes them to have that reaction, I think you would see that the, there's going to be a, an activity in the microtubules similar to what you would see with anesthesia. Oh, okay. And and you could do that chemically if you, mm-hmm. you know, if you're something that's a, a a microbial mass, you know, fungal mass in particular, in particular, that wants to do something in the brain to the host. Um, it seems like it's mostly resource collecting on the surface. You can go a lot deeper with it. Okay. But isn't there doing this and it wants to kind of keep, keep things going a certain direction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you have these other aspects to it that look really out of place with mm-hmm. some of these species where they will be putting out these chemistries that, all right, so, uh, cryptococcus that we're talking about puts out urease. It's one of its virulence factors and uh, urease interacts with your, uh, uric acid. And one of the off chemicals is ammonia. So of course, mm-hmm. ammonia is toxic in the brain. You don't want that right. happening. And if right. that's something where there's certain pathways, you know, who knows how deep this would go? This is something that needs analysis, and I've got some ideas and you know, experiment methods that I've kind of proposed to people um, a little bit that would kind of verify this. But you could look for these chemical markers to happen at certain times around experiences or things like that you know check these levels after an abduction is reported for example in this cup and we're going to check out yep and if there's like really high ammonia or really high things that are related to different virulence factors from different species now you've got kind of a a target you can say oh that happened within this time frame and if it wasn't before after you know or levels off it's probably Mm -hmm. connected to that event wow you know that's a pretty simple test yep and it's just you know that's a whiz quiz you know your analysis there you go so this this whole idea though of, of like a, a larger consciousness driving this, it fits a lot of what we've kind of termed as gods, I think, and given different names to along the way. And you see these stories repeat. You know, anyone that has really looked at the old stuff for a long time start, you know, you start picking it up. You can yeah. see like, oh, this family is just like this family. They're doing the same the same stuff, you know, kind of the same naming orders and whatnot. And then you start realizing, wait a second, maybe this is more of a story of like this progress of something that needed to represent itself to us a certain way, which I'm not mm-hmm. the first to say this, so this isn't anything new here, but you know, they represent themselves to us a certain way, you know, in some cultures, it was Zeus and some, it was, you know, Horus, whatever, you know, these just different, you know, gods. But if you think about that idea of that massive consciousness that's attached to a bunch of mycelial networks, maybe uh, attached to more than one at the same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like you and yeah. I, we have a pretty close, you know, connection to what we consider our consciousness and you know that's all driven by activity microtubules and neurons and all these things that you could stack up and look at really macro levels of how that all works but you know i'm i'm me and you're you and -hmm. it's kind of like we're uh kind of like a localized we have a non-local element i believe to our consciousness of course but the localized side matches my localized me idea so to speak you know if you're something like this mycelial mass that has a form of consciousness you know a billion years is a long time to be bored dude that is a long time to be bored you know so it's got it's if if it sees some something up here that it can interact with or steer let's say you know this is going really out in left field but you know it's it's in the realm of Mm -hmm. you know if you if you take these theories way out there this is where it lands um so these could be the things that we eventually interacted with and you know egypt and greece and all these different areas and different regions with different groups of people and we called them gods we gave them different names they show up in different forms and i'm not, I'm not saying it accounts for all of them that's right. something a lot of people get confused about too i think but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying there's a, a, a decent slice of what i would consider non-human intelligence that would fall under this bracket um, right. and it just pushes that idea in your head you know if it needs to it has this network that's already kind of built in your brain um mm-hmm. and again cryptococcus is super common um has, has the access yeah, it has the access. It has like the the charge capability, the electrical charge to be able to kind of move and zap 
things a little bit. That's one of its virulence factors, again, is its electrical charge. Wow. So it's right in your hippocampus is able to do that. So it could be in, implanting these false memories, um, you know, freezing you up, like anesthesia type effects. And we hear that too. You know, like mm-hmm. these these things that will show up and, and uh, reports that you get from, from people that run into an NHI, like an ET type NHI, and they will point something at them and just stop them from moving right there on the spot. Right. So what's doing that? You know, there's something that's already in the body waiting for this thing to be pointed at it. And it's probably not your common, like your own nerves want to like be insulated from that type of mm-hmm. input. You know, um, it just turns out that cryptococcus and these other species also do a lot of damage to your myelin sheath. So mm-hmm. there goes your insulation. So now your nerves are a little more, obviously they're agitated, right? But there's other right. things that could be happening there for like input via interference, you know, you could call it really static, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. You know, you move it the right way, and that's all of a sudden looking like Zeus standing in the in the corner of your room or something. You know what I mean? In your head. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's a lot of ways you can go with it um, on these these bigger theories of this NHI stuff, but I think it does it does explain a lot even on the surface stuff. Just the bi- biology end, it's like, oh yeah, this all kind of fits, and you can minimalize it and say, well, it's just a species that was here for so long. And so active in the environment and requiring resources for such a long period of time, it just is master at doing that all the time. Like Lou mm-hmm. says, yeah. maybe maybe we're not top of the food chain. Right. You know, that might not be lizard people. Okay, <laughs> that right. might be yeah. this Fucking muck. Fungus. <laughs> yeah, this muck that nobody. You know, it was there when people figured out a there was there. You mm-hmm. know, that's how that's mm-hmm. how old it is in these stories. Uh, you look at like Apep, same idea. It comes out of this muck. You know, it's kind of in this weird churn you know right. of death and disease and everything yeah dude and the thing that blows my mind on all this shit too is that when they get and yeah i think you and i talked about i don't know if we talked about it in the last podcast but i know what we talked about it is the um you know um meteorites bringing in fungus from outer space like literally you can it, it travels in space it doesn't die it, it can you know it's brought here i mean i think you and i've shared i, I found a bunch of stuff that was like you know, maybe, you know, that uh, virus that shut the world down a couple of years ago co- could have came from outer space because I read like what five, five or six peer reviewed, you know, papers that were like, yeah, shit comes from space all the time. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, what? You know, nobody uh, knows that. Everybody that thinks that's just like sci fi, but shit comes. From- right. Until you start digging, until you start mm-hmm. looking at it, you know. So, um, you know, one of the things that you're kind of bringing up too here, um, I think relates back to that point about the radio element, the radioactivity mm-hmm. and the and the yeah. the way that it, it, it overpowers them, you know, in mm-hmm. our body and in the environment too, like, you know, Chernobyl right. or on the side of the ISS, whatever. But it, it points to something really deep. What it points to is that these things must have been exposed to massive amounts of radiation for an extended, I'm talking like millions of years to be able to thrive off it. Right. And where, where so, do you get it in from killing you to just basically like thriving off the thing? That yeah. Well, and, and right? where do you get these exposures? The worst right. Right. outside space. the environment, up in space, right. traveling on a meteor or inside a meteor or whatever it might be. Right. You know, um, you know, one of the, one of the theories that we kick around a lot is Saturn. Mm-hmm. You know, Saturn has this lost moon, lost planet that supposedly got blasted to bits a hundred million years or so ago. And of course it's back and forth on this, like everything, but yeah. 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 So it's just out there, you know what I mean? It Mm -hmm. made the Mm -hmm. rings and, you know, it kind of churns along because we're in that big corkscrew we've talked about. And, you know, now you're getting trailed along behind Saturn's dust trail, Mm -hmm. you know, and you can apply that to some of the other stuff that people talk about, like Saturn returns, right. You know, um, think about how that actually is you know if i if i know i don't know it real well so bear with me on this any errors but it kind of is when saturn turns flat to us and it doesn't the rings go away is Mm. like the saturn returns point that's why it it repeats a certain number of times in most people's life because that cycle repeats so so often but if you think about what that would be right so now you you're you're edge on to that disc that's spinning and spinning and spinning and just whipping stuff out into space that we're corkscrewing through and it's kind of pointed right at you at that point isn't it right yeah you're just sucking it in like a yeah you're just right there you know Mm -hmm. so you know and and i think that that survival aspect you know it, it it points to them being um like an extremophile that decided to take up residence in us why wouldn't it Right. I mean, you look at that. I mean, just going back to the 
people don't realize and they're not kind of new to this. If you look at the, and you'll know more about this than I do, but the, um, whatever the fungus is that it uh, infects ants, that'll take an ant. Cordyceps. Yeah. Cordyceps. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Basically turn the ant into a zombie, right? And then make the ant just climb the highest it can possibly climb. Right. So it's taking over the, the complete control of the ant, the, the biology, the physiology, the metal capacity as ant is just completely run by this yep. fungus. Right. Right. And it just it runs, it makes this ant run to the top of the trees, high as it can get. And then once it gets there, it like bites down and grabs it onto the top of this branch and dies. And then the top of this head, this mushroom sprouts on the top of this ant's head. And the whole purpose is for it to spawn and pop yep. up and goes, keep and going. It's, keep going. So it spawns yep. and it blows into the wind and it happens again. And that happens in nature. I mean, I sent you that, that picture the other day on uh, Twitter. Of, of that frog that, with oh yeah with the frog with the mushroom coming out of its back yep. I like, oh yeah i haven't seen that one before <laughs> so no like, and there's weird stuff with amphibians too man that's that's yeah. kind of a i don't know there's something that's not quite right about it but that's closer in in some weird way than you than, than you'd expect um yeah. and maybe it maybe it's because they're so early too so they got mm -hmm. exposed yeah. to all this stuff but you know you think about and actually this is going to segue into some stuff i wanted to talk about um, yeah. i think you'll find interesting with the the steering like cordyceps mm -hmm. but slow motion is what we're dealing mm -hmm. with uh, so yeah. when you look at the when you look at the the amphibian thing um mm -hmm. one of the issue chemicals that you and i have chatted about where people get confused about um endogenous dimethyltryptamine you know nndmt mm -hmm. a lot of people connect that to issues with autism or schizophrenia and it's that's an error so mm -hmm. the correction on that information is that it's actually bufotenine that's the mm -hmm. elevation and if you know bufotenine, that's toad stuff. You know, some oh. some fungi, some fungi can use it as well, which is a big key here, I believe. But bufotenine is basically, and they're and they're like almost apples to apples, except for just a hydroxylase chain being attached. As far as like how some of these chemicals show up, um, and we call them hallucinogens. I really don't like that moniker, but that's what they call them anyway. Um, yeah. So so, but the, literally the only difference is between those two. Uh, bufotenine and NNDMT, which we can make, by the way, like humans can naturally mm -hmm. make, you know, as endogenous, so natural NNDMT. Uh, mm -hmm. We produce that in our body. Um, and again, I think that's more than people think too. But mm -hmm. bufotenine, we shouldn't be making in our body. Okay. So it's all microbial. It's steering, uh -huh. it's like microbes steering it. And if you think about this whole deal, you know, you're talking about this invasive side. Of right. these fungi with like you know literally a, a, a toadstool growing out of a toad it's like yeah. come on uh, a little <laughs> on the nose there but yeah. you know the thing is it's already kind of set up for that like it like mm -hmm. amphibians are already kind of in that you know they, they can utilize bufotenine they all some a lot of them produce bufotenine to some level so that's wow. part of their amine system um you know with, with us there's a thing that happens to make us not produce the right chemical, which I would say is, is dimethyltryptamine. I'll go into why I think this is in a moment here. I'm going to kind of actually, I'm going to cover a little bit of stuff here with like, and it's controversial, but I, well, whatever. Um, it's my stance on why I do believe that endogenous dimethyltryptamine is more prevalent or should be more prevalent in the body than it is. Um, mm. And th then what we accept as well. So I got on this tail. Um, Jason, the initial issues with tryptophan metabolism, because that's where you get to dimethyltryptamine. All right. Um, and I tracked it kind of from ingestion all the way through a different, a bunch of different switches that get flipped and things that might happen to cause imbalances and so on. Um, uh, and landed with, uh, a, a kind of not great picture on the chemistry side. Um, uh, uh -oh. I know there's kind of been questions more recently in, in media and science about, like serotonin and, and really how it works with the body and how, if, how it might not be a standard measurement oh. that we're measuring really like these levels that we look at is like the, the right amount of serotonin oh, for somebody right, right. might still be overdone, hmm. but it's matching the level, the level of the receptor expressions. So we accept it as a normal and standard, but there's things that are driving those uh, receptor expressions too. So I started chasing candida. Because that's the one that would, you know, if you think about what's in the gut and commensal and always kind of there, mm -hmm. um, candida albicans is the big one. And when you look at candida albicans, it's leveraging this, uh, it's called interferon gamma, which has a lot to do with immune response in the body. Uh, and um, 
going to work through these pieces a little slow, so bear with me if you have any questions, like cut in. Um, so this downturn on interferon gamma, uh, it causes some issues where when you have the body with uh, you know enough tryptophan, like the right pathing for tryptophan, we have the system. Uh, it's called the IDO pathway, uh, kynarinine pathway that a lot of tryptophan that we take in, about 90% of it, gets turned down that pathway for immune response. But if you turn down this interferon gamma, that response is turned down. So now what you do take in for tryptophan, let's say it should be, you know, 90% of that should be going to this immune defense section, this IDO mm -hmm. pathway. Now it's not happening as much. It's still happening, of course, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the clamp, part of the immune clamping that's happening uh -huh. is okay. that now there's a lessened immune response there okay, okay. On, and, and now you have an overabundance because let's say it goes from 90 percent of your tryptophan going to ido to like 60 percent 50 percent now you've got mm. 30 40 percent more tryptophan just hanging out in the gut mm -hmm. and that's not great uh there's a bunch of other signaling uh which i'm going to kind of save going into because it's part of what i'm still chipping through on a couple areas but what ends up happening is you end up with um tryptophan getting moved via tryptophan hydroxylase to 5-HTP that everybody knows. So 5-HTP is pretty commonly known. It's like right before serotonin. Um, it's a you know pretty important chemical for getting to that step. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, hip, the tryptophan hydroxylase itself and where it's coming from is one of the primary issues uh, with this immune response thing. So you have these enterochromaffin cells that are all through the gut. And those are the ones that do a lot of the serotonin related work. We, we bill it mm -hmm. as serotonin, but it should really be a broader range of amines. Um, and when you look at how they're expressing in response to the excess tryptophan, it looks like more uh, tryptophan hydroxylase is, is available. So that tryptophan, it's called uh, TPH1, is the gene that they actually express that goes through this process of, of uh, hydroxylating tryptophan over to 5-HTP and when you have 5-HTP that also turns down immune response so it's two oh. steps now that candida is taken by leveraging wow. this interferon gamma issue and where this gets strange is that you have to um, decarboxylate serotonin well 5-HTP to make it serotonin that's this other step that happens so this uh, there's AADC is the you know what gets expressed that causes that mm -hmm. to happen and it moves the 5-htp that we're talking about to serotonin once uh, that happens once that happens john that serotonin uh is pretty much gut bound because mm -hmm. serotonin doesn't really pass the blood brain barrier as easy as people think wow so here's where we get into the steering issue uh, i'm going to go further with some of this tryptophan stuff in a second but the steering issue gets bigger so now you're now you've got serotonin and mm -hmm. serotonin is hitting, you know, receptors and signaling through um, the vagus nerve up through to the hippocampus, pineal gland as well. You know, that whole region because you know, it's all in innervated there in different different ways. Um, mm -hmm. They they start getting that signal from the gut related to serotonin signaling. So that's how that's actually getting passed up to the brain to tell it to do more with chemistry and and change to what it's doing. More of it. and, Right, yeah, or, to make more or less, less, you know, make more right. melatonin at this stage of the day or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. all related to that intake, that third connection to that, you know, because yeah. the third eye literally is a third eye. The pineal gland is literally like light, dark, and senses that and kind of cycles a lot of things. Uh, but it ties back and forth to the gut. There's a lot of report mm -hmm. from the brain to the, to the gut, that whole second brain idea. But yeah. it's mostly microbially driven. As I just mm -hmm. said, you know, all these steps that got us to serotonin which is now kind of gut bound and can't be moved around anymore that's right. just signaling to the brain to do stuff that's sort but, of like when you take a serotonin uptake inhibitor yeah you take it you take a pill right? now it's it doing gut. right and that's balancing stuff out because that signal is not really getting from the gut to the brain is it's, it's changing how it gets from the gut to the brain basically right right uh, for most ssris stopping it right yeah 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 sorry yeah the, the little bit of information i know yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so we've talked about that INMT stuff, though, yeah. before. So INMT mm -hmm. is the one that's that next, that kind of final step. If you had mm -hmm. tryptamine, if you have right. tryptamine, double that INMT, and it becomes your dimethyltryptamine, your NNDMT endogenously. So right. if you go back to serotonin, though, if you're not doing tryptamine, mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. you have this little branch where tryptophan hydroxylase mucks things up and now you got 5-HTP becoming serotonin from AADC. It should be tryptophan getting hit with AADC to become tryptamine. Those are kind of same, same. Oh, and that double okay. methylation on each of those causes one chemical being NNDMT or the other bufotenine. Now, Whoa. here's what's strange. You don't see a lot of expression in the gut for INMT. So I was I was chasing this for like three weeks straight, man. I could not find it. And I finally, the other day, looked at Saccharomyces. Bread and, you know, bread and beer yeast, <laughs> basically. Everyone thinks about it. You know, <laughs> right. So it's brewers, bakers, yeast, that kind of stuff. That Saccharomyces yeah, okay. family. Gotcha. So it turns out that Saccharomyces has two genes uh, of its own that express INMT. Nice. So now you have so serotonin we... that's microbial. Yep. And now that's just sitting in the gut. And now Saccharomyces, that, I mean, how, how many people eat bread? How many people drink beer? There's incidental yeast that gets through, man. It might not colonize you to the point of causing a, a disease, like a symptom you're going to go to the doctor for, but it's in there. It's doing its yeah. business. Now it's making INMT and double methylating your serotonin to be in bufotenine. Ooh. Right. And what was the issue chemical in in autism and schizophrenia for the the negative impact side? Bufotenine is what shows up the most in the urine. So now you've got this control kind of going yeah. on. And it's a it's like I say, it's this thing where you you think cordyceps being the thing driving the ant up the tree. Right. This is the thing that's driving us to do other things, you know, and you know, there's other there's other cascade failures that happen once you get to the, you know, if tryptophan or okay, so he, here's what's weird: uh, serotonin, blood brain barrier, not an easy pass. Okay, it's mm-hmm. mostly signaling. Tryptophan, uh, tryptamine, and uh, tryptophan hydro well 5-HTP can all pass the blood brain barrier. Serotonin can't. All the pre okay. all the pre's can. Uh, bufotenine, I don't believe that one has a pass on BBB, but don't quote me. I'm still. You know, a hmm. little, little gray on how that one works, getting from the gut, doing everything else it does. It might just be signaling there. But NNDMT, so endogenous mm-hmm. DMT, once that gets made, that has an immediate, like, like pulls it along level of blood-brain barrier pass, right, to the hippocampus. Yep, right up there. If you're not making it yourself. Okay, so, you know, in, in the mm-hmm. pineal gland, a lot of the argument, debate has been that you just, you know, you don't really see the chemistry happening the way that it should. Right. But if what is happening in the gut with that gap I was talking about with IDO and leaving too much tryptophan and then it's causing more hydroxylase to cause the 5-HTP issue. If, you wouldn't you know, see it. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, 5-HTP is what's making it to your hippocampus pineal gland that way, you know, getting passed along and getting up there, you know, very, and now, you, now you've got this whole setup where you're going to end up with serotonin. And mm-hmm. then you can end up with melatonin because that's off that same chain. It's a different chemical than INM, INMT and AADC that do that. That makes melatonin, but it's all part of that same process up there. Uh, but the thing is, it, INMT and AADC are both expressed heavily. They actually co-locate wow. in the pineal gland. So if the only thing, and bear in mind now, INMT only has a couple substrates. Mm-hmm. It's amines, basically, uh, and... Selenium, like selenium-related processes. So mm-hmm. that's kind of immune-related. Uh, can be kind of inflammatory. It goes both ways. But so that's the only two substrates. And your pineal gland is expressing the hell out of it. And it actually, like I say, co-localizes with AADC. So now, uh-huh. if as long as you're getting tryptophan there, see, it's like as soon as that hydroxylase happens, it's a lockout. Mm-hmm. Now you're it not going to end up with tryptamine. It. It, almost, it almost blocks it, right? Right, because, right. you know, yeah, you're not going to end up being with, with tryptamine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you do have other issues when you get to the brain anyway. So if you do get tryptophan correctly mm-hmm. up there by avoiding all that gut impact we talked about, and you mm-hmm. do get that to, say, the pineal gland or tryptamine, let's say, in, in ideal situations, now you have another issue, which we've talked about before, with cryptococcus causing microglial mm-hmm irritation now we're back to that loop so now this is the part where the maos are coming in dude because you can go out you can find it everywhere everyone knows that there's just an issue with maos being overexpressed and that's why we never really see these chemistries happen the right way those maos are getting overexpressed at the behest of these microbes so cryptococcus snares up the micro the microglia and makes it start freaking out. And that's what really, and, and you know, there's other things that express this too, but that's the easiest one to look at in the data. Uh, MAO, A and B, which would of course degrade you know, amines in general, 
Um, mm -hmm. And this is a key here. So there's not a lot of usage, and there's some, of course, but there's not as much usage with cryptococcus on the, the tryptophan metabolism side. But dopamine, it loves dopamine. It needs dopamine, mm. actually. So it wants to have those MAOs out in the wild, you know, out in serum, what have you, in CSF, to degrade dopamine. And when you degrade dopamine, the chemicals that happen off that oxidation, um, cryptococcus actually uses to make stronger melanin to resist more against getting combated. Jeez. Right. So an incidental damage that you and I are looking at in this model of NNDMT is where the tryptophan metabolism is not as high as dopamine. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's going to be just an, like a you know accidental kind of effect that the tryptamine is getting degraded. So wow. the other ones don't get affected by thing. that. It's neutering yeah. it. So yeah. it's, it's completely. Yep. So I would say it's cock blocking it. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, and it's and it's from you know, and, and bear in mind, you know, for for my model, it's not something where you're going to be having those breakthroughs with the level of dimethyltryptamine. I think should be happening in the body. It's more suited to, you know, health effects, um, meditation, right. prayer states, those kind of things. You know, because mental, sick... mental acuity, probably things like that. Right? Yeah, and and getting uh getting a lot of receptors, um, straightened out. You mm -hmm. know, as part of it. Um, because well, there's so, a lot of things. Well, well, I'm sorry, but so what happens when, for example, you take DMT? So like you take, um, uh, I don't even know what it is anymore, synthetic, whatever, right? You lick the yeah. toad. <laughs> well, whatever, that's, right? that'd be like, Bufo. Yeah, that'd be Bufo. Yeah. I don't want that one, but yeah. You don't so, want that one. But no, yeah, if you go, well, if you go do, down the... Well, I'm not that guy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But so, yeah, like, so like, what does it do internally then to your body? Does your body go into overdrive? Well, and create less of it then afterwards, or more of it, or does it have any? Is it just the? That, it's, it, it looks like there should be a different effect? equilibrium. Yeah, right. it looks like there should be a different equilibrium. Like, um, there's a lot of receptors it engages with that people don't really think about. Okay. So I, I mentioned these sigma receptors a lot mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. chatter online. Um, those are important. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, sigma one, the only endogenous agonist for it is dimethyltryptamine it's the only thing and when you look at what it does it controls a primary issue with disease which is our calcium ion control at like the membrane level wow. so a lot of the damages and stuff and these bad signaling and uh, issues that happen with pathogens particularly fungi um, that gets kind of turned off that ca wow. calcium access gets turned off by these sigma ones that only get activated that way by DMT. Wow. So that's something you know, and you hear that from people that do well. Some people that do like exogenous ceremony type stuff with mm -hmm. dimethyltryptamine, like ayahuasca and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I think would be the right one there. Because um, you take it that internally, they, then that, right, and it's, that's in your gut, and that's doing a whole. Yeah, the well, it, part of it, right? I mean, because it's that's yeah, and you got to take the MAOI too. Don't forget that too. Back to what we were just talking about, you got to take an MAO, right. MAOI to make that you know function correctly. That's right. how that's how much these pathogens are driving that process in our body, and in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, quietly. So, but when you take it, you know, there's a bunch of things that happen, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there's it's in the data a bit with uh, storage, like the body's mm -hmm. storage of dimethyltryptamine. Right. Um, and it has kind of this threshold, you know, like any other signaling in the body that calls for it and right. uses it as appropriate, does what it needs to do. And, and then it just, you know, that's all Levels stored, itself moved, out, right? levels yeah. itself out. Right. And, and it should be maintained at a level that's kind of stored and topped off and then used as appropriate for different things, you know, in reaction right. to, you know, so mm -hmm. if you're sick or have a disease coming in, Sigma one's call for it, you know, and then this is all happening and gets activated by DMT, you know? So when you mm -hmm. take it exogenously, I think it's not, it's not like a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some people have taken that the wrong way from me. It's, you know, I, I'm just, I'm looking for the absolute like clearest channel to see what happens inside the body on its own. So I, right. I don't, I don't do that myself, but when you do take it, you know, it's it's doing the same thing. It is mm -hmm. a larger, I believe it's a larger amount. It's like hitting right, a different threshold, right, um, right. breakthrough, that kind of stuff. You know, um, like I've, I've been reading a bit more about um, Dr. Gallimore's work, Andrew Gallimore's work with trying to map these hyperspaces and whatnot. 
these uh, with these sustained doses and everything right you know so you kind of you, you do end up in these other uh it's not just an altered state i don't think really you know we're getting more and more kind of confirmation of that as, as we're getting further down the disclosure chain that there's uh something beyond what we would consider you know the, yeah. just the consciousness of the of the body there's like definitely a non-local element to us too like i said mm-hmm. earlier in the conversation i think that that's going to come up more prevalent now that we're seeing things leak a little more here and there and you hear more about hey it actually is related to disease you know like mm-hmm. lou's book that dropped there were there were enough things in his book when i read the you know the parts that i read through um i gotta get through the whole thing but mm-hmm. you know the part about the implants the part about the angel hair and all these other things like i'm pretty sure he mentioned angel hair in, in one of the excerpts that i read um I think it all kind of ties back to this whole issue, mm-hmm. you know? So now we're, now we're at a point where looking at what's been said about diseases and how that's kind of part of what, you know, I'm mean, how many people are in that world that are mouth piecing ex- disclosure right now. Mm-hmm. Here they're coming oh, wow. out of these, these labs, right. That there's, there's something there. Like we that's know that there's a restraint, on. like, a, like it's like we're held back from something, you know, like a control system. You know, you and I have talked yeah. about that before. You know, yeah. I, I've kind of gone down that road a bit, you know, uh, last probably six months or so. I started looking at it. other pieces to, you know, I thought it was just a control system that might be what we're talking about with, you know, the abduction or possession ideas that we're bouncing right. around right now. Um, yeah. But I think it's bigger. I think it's way bigger um, than that. And you can look at, uh, the, like, the example I use is Egypt. Um, which, you know, some people, I've, I've gotten a lot of kickback on it, but I don't really care. So what I, what I think there is, I think there was a control system that involved, um, uh, something to do with the pyramids, which I'm going to go mm-hmm. into here, um, and something to do with yeast alongside, like that was a known mm-hmm. thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, I believe that there was a, a, a level of knowledge that we lost along the way potentially, or that was just, it was there and kind of got eked out a little bit, you know, from like say 10, 12,000 BC on when that things kind of changed a little bit and then we got more established in, in the Cairo region for Egypt. But there's a, a, you know, pretty well known fact with the commoners in Egypt, you have the bread and beer scenario that we've talked about. They have the fucking beer yeah. recipes like chiseled on the wall. Oops. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Right. You know, and it was, <laughs> that it, big was of a deal, right? it was, it was like nasty stuff chis- too, dude. It was like yeah. nasty, you know, really, really <laughs> nasty stuff. Um, when I say nasty, it, you know, I'm speaking from my own perspective of not like right, it right, yeast right. very much, you know, uh, yeah. Basically, but, put a bunch of yeast in, in a cup and drink it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So you're drinking these. Yeah. You know, it, to to me, it's a bunch of toxins, mm-hmm. active cells. You know, things that have gone through their processes. So you kind of get that kick. Um, and there's a lot of age variation between mm-hmm. you know the priests and pharaohs and the commoner. Right. And what I'm going to steer it back to here is that that radioactivity issue mm-hmm. that we've talked about. You know, and if you look at the current current day at the pyramids, mm-hmm. the pyramid site. If you work there, uh, I think you have to get checked for radiation exposure every so often, maybe oh, annually shit. or a couple times a I year, didn't whatever know it is. I didn't know well, that. yeah. Well, if you look at the, the pyramids construction, they're, you know, the core, there's these giant blocks of granite in there. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And what, what comes off of granite radon? It's radiation, right? Yeah, most people of. don't know that you can literally take a Geiger counter. And a lot of people, like in America anyway, everybody loves your granite countertop. So you can literally take a Geiger counter and go up to your granite countertop and set this thing off. Yeah. Yeah. Most people in their houses. So you now we know it... that you can literally take a Geiger counter, you get an Amazon and stick it on your granite countertop and it goes, Barrr. it's like yeah. coming so, out of the stone you think is cool that's on top of your counter. And, and make those hundred ton blocks and yeah. many of them, you know what I mean? So, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've seen the shape. It's mm-hmm. kind of parabolic in a way. Right. You know, it's got those dense. Amplifies dents. it almost, yeah. Yeah, so like a radio, you know, like a, a radar type array, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, so here's the scenario in my book. You have a bunch of people that basically, as soon as you're not drinking mother's milk, you're bread and beer all the way through. Not literally, mm-hmm. but pretty damn close. So, right. you know, that's what you take in from birth to grave. And you've got yeast, usually Saccharomyces, in you. And that experiment that I've talked about before, where they showed mm-hmm. that you could 
amplify the yeast's activity or cut it off by completely like Faraday caging them away from radiation mm-hmm. or food, they'll die mm-hmm. off. They'll go into right. torpor at ambient. And if you go above that ambient level, they start freaking out, right? They take the host out quicker. They cut your life short, right? right. Basically, it's the math you end up with. So now you've got this populace at the base of the pyramids that have been intaking Saccharomyces for their entire birth to grave. And their, their grave is coming a little bit sooner. Because you've also got this, you know, at least the areas that were settled right around those pyramids, um, which is where most people were in that era. Boom. Now you've got this kind of parabolic radioactive element happening from this giant, huge structure, you know, largest of its kind that we know of, that's just putting in this radiation off. And what is that doing to the populace? So you're looking at, you know, amplifying this yeast that's in them, this bread and beer element, um, and causing it to go hypervirulent. And take them wow. out at one fifth of the time or one quarter of the time as what you would see with, say, Ramses the Great. You know, lived like 80, 90 years old compared to his, you know, the commoner was, you know, 20, 25 or something like that for a male. Oh, so there's your, there's, there's a, there's an extension of the idea of a control theory. You know, it's like, okay, you can look at it as something that, you know, you can classify under phenomenon and NHI type stuff. But who taught, who taught them this in Egypt? Probably the- fungus itself it could be that whole <laughs> idea of like a consciousness <laughs> that, that pushing consciousness it's, it's pushing itself right right and it's and that's a, that's a survival method at mm-hmm. its core is an extension of the colony to its greatest degree you know it really is and you can take it that far you can get you really into that beer recipe wait a minute i got this idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> This yeah, within, t- <laughs> yeah, and within two generations, you forgot who told you to begin with. So there you go. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. that amnesia just aspect. Yeah, totally. So mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I I think that I like that a, theory. It's a solid theory. I mean, if I, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it I, happened. I like it. It happens. You know, um, more recently too, in my book. You know, and this is probably more of a more of an accidental scenario, um, in in my estimation, but. Yeah, if you look back to uh, like the late 40s, around there, early 50s or so, you know, we've got some agreements that were talked about, and now we have kind of, well, potentially, you know, I know people That's have right, their yeah. have their back and forth on this stuff, but um, you know, potentially it was an agreement made somewhere around the 50s, early 50s, and there was something apparently that did happen at Roswell. You know, that's kind of yeah. out there now that Roswell's kind of confirmed officially, unofficially as being a thing, which, you know, most of us knew that already. But anyway, um, something happened, right? Something happened. Something happened. Something that was off. You know, I don't think it was all fed games. I'll say that for sure. Um, that's just my estimation, of course, and whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I don't I don't think it was all mind game stuff. I think it was definitely something that was like not not something they were ready to explain. You know, well, I mean, um, I, I think we talked about this before, and it's not readily talked about. Everybody's thinking about oh, their bodies and crash sites. But yeah, but the, st- the other story that never gets much of attention uh, is that the people that were there that recovered the debris or recovered the actual bodies died rapidly within mm-hmm. weeks right? Yep. from exposure to whatever that was, right? Yeah. And, and that's, they you call know, that's, it a retrovirus, right? They call it an alien retrovirus. Yeah, right? and you know, that. and you you think about what I said earlier, way back, uh, about those seed cells, mm-hmm. and some of those they look like just a protein sheath with some RNA in it, dude. I mean, what is that? You just what go, other term is that's oh, a virus, oh, right? I got some. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> and yeah, you got five five thousand more. Yep, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, if you if you look at. Um, Late forties, you know, so we got Roswell. Virginia, Virginia, Brazil, same thing happened. The guy that grabbed the creature. Yep. Dead dead in like yep. five days or something. Right? Well, and what do they but, smell like? They smell like ammonia, sulfur, right? Sulfur too. Was it well, one? sulfur, yeah. There's yeah. and that's a weird split. There's there's the ones that smell like sulfur and mm-hmm. the ones that get reported like ammonia. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. you know, I, I mean who knows? You know, but Oops. the ammonia one I can kind of point to because yeah. it, uh that whole deal with fungi breaking down uric acid with Ooh, various azes, ureas crazy, in particular, ammonia. you end up with ammonia smell. Right. Right. You know, Weird. so there's, there's another vector to that whole idea of this being something that's like, not what we are thinking it is. You know, it's something that's presenting itself a certain way. Um, and that happened. And I think, you know, the, the late forties, early fifties, mm-hmm. something happened. Um, 
you know, I was just listening to, uh, maybe it was Lavenda Visconti. Mm-hmm. I think there was a group, mm-hmm. kind of a group chat they did that I was oh, picking yeah. up pieces Space. of. Yeah, that was one of the spaces, Twitter right? Space. Yeah. yeah. Um, Galactic Tributor. You keep asking me to one. go out to the thing. Visconti keeps going, come on, come out to the thing. I'm like, I'm not paying you $1,000 to listen to you guys fucking rattle off for a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah I. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. I, under- I appreciate, I appreciate Lavinda and his, and you know all the work he's done. Amazing author, amazing researcher, does great work. Scotty just rubbed me the long way a little bit. Just I don't know, just because he maybe attacked my, you know, my Rosicrucian organization a little bit. You know? Yeah. Well, you but know, that's his own thing. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, Crowley you know, lovers are just going to be like that. I guess. Yeah, you know, and I, dude, I mean, I, hey, I sit around and. I sit around and read, like like I, I take my personal notes from Nagamati. So there you go, whatever. Hey, so it's just yeah. how it is, dude. Um, you know, you believe yeah, what you believe, you know what you but know. I'm, Yeah, I'm just you know let him let him do it. But yeah, no, I, at least you got to look at that whole that whole side of it too. And, and I'm not discounting it at all, at all. But I want to steer the I want to steer a little bit because I want to I want to dig I want to I want to pry yeah. all the people that reached out to you. And what the fuck's going on now? And the people that you can't talk about, and what are you oh, doing? Okay. And what do they right. want? All and right. what's happening? Because I want to get. To, I know you don't. Yeah, I know you probably can't drop all of it, but. Yeah. So I can. I can. Paint okay, a picture so, for me. Yeah, I'll. I'll paint a picture. So yeah. I run my mouth a lot online. I've been doing that for about three years now. <laughs> Who doesn't? Uh, yeah, right. You know. I mean, I. I got some death threats off it. I don't really care. Oh, you I'm know. sorry about that. I didn't. Know well, that. whatever, Seriously? dude. It, it happens. You know, it's mm. it's, it's phenomenonville. You say something that's uh, yeah. maybe either too close to home or too out of line uh, yeah. in phenomenon the stuff, on, yeah. and there you go. So, yeah. so it, you know, it, well, you know, it happened, and it I happens. kept going, and I've yeah. kept going for three years now. So, hey, hi, out there, uh, I'm still going. So. The thing for me is that um, I have a lot of theories that I developed in isolation as mm-hmm. best I could. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, I came into all this phenomenon stuff late, which I mentioned a lot on on various interviews. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, it's worth yeah. it's worth saying again for anyone that hasn't caught my caught my work before. I, I do as much as I can on my own, looking at just data, um, particularly on the medical side, and then I I think obviously I integrate it with what I already know about my general theory on these things. Um, mm-hmm. And I got to the point of a couple of theories uh, that I think hit a little close to home because I got to reach out like real quick. Um, I don't well, know what. Yeah. I'm not trying to stop, but not only in, you're not doing it in a vacuum. I mean, at a certain point you've actually, uh, you know, taken your research and had somebody. I'm saying, oh, I I'm using peer, peer, peer oh, review. Yeah. Yeah, peer I come review up for that air. Is, Oh, yeah, Jesus, that day my camera do something queer, weird. Like I did that. I got this AI camera that if you oh oh is that what's things, going on there? Oh, yeah, it got weird on me. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing, but picked yeah. up some of the and, background, spooky. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Ooh. Oh, hey, Fucking that's pretty magic. handy. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Th- so I, anyways, I gotta... I'm sorry. I, so like, yeah, like you have other people. Look. It's not like you're just doing this in a vacuum. At some point, in in, in not all your research, and I'm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you've had other people look over your research and people, those people right. that are uh, in, in the field that would know better go, holy shit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I've, okay. I've had, Sorry. yeah, exactly. You know, uh, okay. I've got clinical contacts, like I've, I've mentioned before, right. uh, that look this stuff over. Um, and this isn't just looking over stuff like the protocol stuff. This is looking over the deeper parts of what I'm coming up with for like, hey, this looks like this could be nhi to me what do you think yeah. you know really right. having people look at it um and yeah it has come up that it, it's it's fairly in the right direction like heavily in mm-hmm. the right direction and some of this stuff with the the like the the psi component mm-hmm. uh, and and everything i started connecting to this deeper part of microtubule function and what i saw going on um that match experiencers and some other things that you know it's almost like a I make a joke about being a canary in a coal mine. It's like there's some groups that'll show first that this is a yeah. thing that happens. And yeah. then it's available for everybody. It's just that some people are, are kind of like uh, like a flashlight and yeah. they, they just shine the light on what's happening and then everyone's able to move there. You know, that's that kind mm-hmm. of idea. Um, right. And it seems like some of that came down to certain lineages. And it seemed like to me that some of those lineages were what would be considered Neanderthal. 
Um, there's micro, there's microtubule differences. There's a lot of things that make it so that experiences would happen more frequently for groups that come from that, that lineage, um, mm-hmm. which everyone has some degree of. There's not many people on the planet that don't have some aspect. It's mm-hmm. lower in certain groups than others, of course, but it's, it's uh, some of the, some of the genes related to changes that they brought to our populace as mankind mm-hmm. that shows up in pretty much everybody across the globe in various reach you know various degrees different genes but it's it's all kind of related to that neanderthal gene set um so when you started hitting on that is when the i got a, i got yeah it wasn't a, really a knock knock but it was pretty close um so because mm. I, I caught some shit for it i put the thread up on twitter and, and i mm. it, like i i got immediate heat you know it wasn't as bad as it wasn't as bad as the heat I got back, you know, talking about the fungus's disclosure thing way back because that was the worst yeah. of it. But, um, oh, you know, wow. that's that was a, that was just stupid. But anyway, mm. um, so I, I said this whole thing about Neanderthals being one of the breakaway species. Um, mm. I have a slightly different read on it now. I think maybe some maybe maybe there's something to Neanderthals being more of like a. Uh, an offshoot from base Homo sapiens. To some Ooh. degree, that's why I get so confused. In my opinion, anyway, and this is really way down the line for theory, but yeah. um, that some of them—that's why they're so confusing in the skeletal record, like the fossil record. Uh, it mm. really does some strange stuff where they start looking like humans. Humans look like them. There's a lot of crossover and stuff, and a lot of genes that kind of show Physi- up. Right, and I, I, and all that stuff, right? yeah, and and I think that's going to come out as a component um, mm. in in disclosure. I really do think this is going to come come to roost because it's like you look at what uh, Lewis said in his book. I think he highlighted um, one of the Native American tribes, possibly Cherokee, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly from from yeah, that excerpt. I think that's right. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and they have a high percentage compared to other groups um, of Danatol lineage. So the Scotch and the irish right the scott and the irish. yeah uh, yeah and then there's yeah. then there's also um like moroccan lines mm. that kind of show uh sammy i think have some as well up way up in scandinavia region like way up north in the arctic right. um i mean there's there yeah there's records of of people that show those traits all through dude like yeah. um like uh, kurapira which i think i mentioned a little bit to you at one point um mm-hmm. there's another there's a few groups that are related to Maori culture and, and legends that present the same way. Like the way you think about Neanderthals presenting usually with like kind of the lighter skin and the, and the red hair and the freckling and, and light eyes and stuff that's kind of ingrained in these cultures that are all separate from each other. Um, mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And that just goes into a big ass Robert Supper video. <laughs> Oh air. yeah, you can go. You can go all the way down with that. So, yeah. so to to get to the thing about you know getting contacted, um, yeah. it was around yeah. that era. Okay. And I also talked about the control system a bit. Uh, there's actually a kind of a longer form post of mine on Twitter somewhere that mm. is a. Uh, it's the whole letter. What happened is I I got contacted by someone. I, I I'm I'm not going to name names. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not what I'm. That's not what I do. But I got well, contacted know, is by this somebody. Is the person that we would know that I would? Know yes. Maybe? Oh, okay. everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows okay. the person who contacted me for sure. Um, okay. everybody, and also everybody knows the person who asked them to contact me. So that's okay. all. It's a big loop. Um, so I got contacted, and I was like, okay, this. You know, first off, I was like, it's it's kind of weird. I'm being contacted by someone at this person's level about my theories. Mm-hmm. Right. Asked, asked me to detail them, um, told me who was asking, and mm. I was like, okay, I'll I'll detail it. Yep, no problem. Mm. Give me give me a night or two. So I did. I kind of worked over like maybe three four days. I got a, that whole letter together um, that's mm-hmm. on Twitter, yeah. and I sent it off, and I got asked for um, citations against what I had said. So I supplied like seventy plus citations that are in that series of images overnight. That was just an overnight thing. I already had them ready to go because I already used them to do my research anyway to get where I had the theory. Um, right. So I passed that over. And then it's just, you know, we had a couple of meetings here and there. Um, still having some meetings with people that are adjacent to but not directly connected to that original person that reached out. Um, so, he, you know, they, they've done some good things to help some of what I'm doing for work, but it's mostly on the medical side. Um, yeah. I feel like my, my, <clears throat> my take on Psy... And the way I see it needing to be measured and confirmed and everything else is very different than what the standard is right now. And that's yeah. where I think this hit a hitch. Um, 
like there's a direction I want to go with checking out how Psy works under the hood. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. related to uh, that crossroad of health and getting those systems back online, like the mm -hmm. dimethyltryptamine system and, and a bunch of these other systems that I think have been like kind of turned off and, and shut down for us over time. Like when you mm -hmm. lose the magic as a kid, right. that kind of thing happening, it's like that, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I think that that's really where this, for me, it's where Psy goes and comes from and everything else is like, you know, uh, separating the non-local consciousness that's not ours from ours and then taking a look at what those both are um, mm -hmm. separately to get a better read mm -hmm. on what we're really doing with consciousness and how we interact with ourselves. So that's my bigger theory. And I think they just, that's not what they're looking for. You think they're so, looking for a way to turn it on? Or do you I know think, what they're looking for? Do they tell you what they're looking for? No, well, no, not exactly. I mean, yes, but not. Eh. Here's what I'd say about it. <laughs> Let me, let me, I'm not trying to hedge here. <laughs> I know. So, I'm just, so I'm there, just trying to, you know. I'll say that a lot of focus is still on remote viewing. Mm. And I think that that's an error. Uh, and I, when I say a lot of the focus, I mean a lot of the focus of where the money is going, uh, okay. uh, where it's coming from, you know, all that stuff. Like there, it's like there's a particular direction. Well, that's probably, it's when you think about it from the other side of that, it's probably an easier funding mechanism because of the historical nature of proof. That's results. part of the issue though. I think, I think mm. that's part of the issue. Yes, you're right. The funding's easier, but the mm -hmm. funding is the trap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. So funding's because what happens, you get the funding going in this certain direction, which is, you, you know, keep proving that it's remote that viewing, direction. that's what you yeah. need to do. So now yeah. everyone's myopically focused on remote viewing <laughs> where you and I know, yeah. I mean, dude, you, like the first time that we did an interview, Okay, yeah. like what was the, what was you know that night? I mean, you've talked about it, you know. Yeah. That, that whole thing that happened with the dream you had, you know, and we're talking about these hyperspaces and stuff. Yeah. That's why I see that I see that as being more important to the the furthering of psi knowledge than remote viewing. Those are the things yeah. I want to know about. How do you trigger these hyperspaces, these shared spaces? And, and we've had them before, you know, in the mm -hmm. group too. I I met someone probably six months ago that i don't know i want to say maybe like three months before i met them they had a dream at that same lodge that i've told you about before yeah <laughs> i didn't know them when they had this dream dude and they wow. were actually in the, we, we compared notes and i did it in such a way as to not like feed information as yeah. carefully as possible um the floor plan was right for them yeah. the event that they were at was correct as well it was that interview that I told you about where I was yeah. trying to run up front to get to some interview or like not interview, but some speech I was supposed to be giving. Mm -hmm. They were there the night that I was giving the speech and they were getting brought up to the balcony above the stage where I was going to give the speech in my dream. And wow. that was, and the timing was right too. I, in, in fact, I want to say that that was probably the way they explained it. It would have been around the time that I had that same interaction. So you, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, you, you get these groups that want a certain outcome Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna it's not gonna move the needle, man. That's my right. that's my whole deal with it. You know, I, I feel like there's you know, there's a lot more that needs to be identified, a lot more that needs to be moved. Like I've given people, you know, experimental method to, you know, do all of this stuff, you know, show like which signal is your signal, and mm -hmm. then hey, maybe we can measure if that signal when they do, you know, not really remote view, but when you bounce out to check something. You know, I don't like the coordinate and the, like the picture based remote viewing. I think that you could yeah. throw yourself into that spot real quick and kind mm -hmm. of project something to right. an area. And that's what remote viewing is, but it's a really small slice of it. So you, you should be able to measure those things in, you know, a room that's two clicks out, but that's what you have in that person, person focus on. And then you mm -hmm. already know what signal you're looking for from their okay. brain, their brain pattern being clean and cleared out, whatever else. And it's like, you've done whatever you need to, to get to that point. Now you're trying to have that person do this thing and view whatever's over two clicks away. Now they're able to kind of measure on that end and say, Oh, that same signal did show up over here. So they were mm -hmm. able to move that signal from where they were physically to where they needed to look at something. Those are the type of measurements that need to happen. So yeah, it's still kind of in that remote viewing vein, but it's not the, the pared down version everyone's kind of looking at right now. Yeah, and the so, funding guys are probably looking at a way to rapidly increase their potential for acquisition. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say that's <laughs> I'm probably. I'm I mean, trying to use the word. I'm trying to use politically correct. You words. could say monetize, dude. 
yeah. they're looking to mo- it's, that's that's the trick and that's what you do with funding yeah. you find a way to to make it work at the quickest cheapest available way that's the most provable to the general public and then you just shuttle it out with a you know dollar sign and a paycheck for you yeah because yeah. nothing's changed dude on that end no no, Nothing's changed. No, no. So, so that, that, and, that you think that's what these guys were after then, right? Maybe. Well, to a degree, yeah. You know, yeah. they they definitely wanted to know about the control system. You know, yeah. what's your control system? And and it, it extends. Like I say, I use that as a catch-all. But you yeah. know, we're talking the fungal control system, the 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 God NHI control system stuff. It all kind of wraps in, but that extends mm-hmm. itself out too to things like the but, pyramids that we talked about. Did, or, did they give you any any info? back i mean you're giving them all this information did they come back and go yeah dude you're on the right path or um, it's been you know what i mean did they give you any feedback Uh, oh yeah well okay so one of the people i've been dealing with the most um i i i'm not saying that he doesn't think there's anything to it but i don't think he understands why there's something to it Mm. which is fine you know it's not you know it's not going to click for everybody at first Uh, uh, you know but it's also something i've seen for hundreds of people having Mm -hmm. the same effect and in this, you know, in the group and everything else, you know, there's yeah. there's a very small cross section that takes a longer period of time to have some kind of what they self report as an increased ability with psi and these 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 abilities, you know, these these different things that you can look up. You know, I, I don't want to go through all of them here because most people yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. But yeah. you know, they, they they report an increase in these capabilities. Um, so I think that that person, you know, that person that's in that section of what I'm dealing with, um. Again, they they have this specific focus because of the funding. Mm, yeah. So we're yeah, back to square yeah. one. It's the funding right. thing, steering it. We need to do this thing a certain way to be able to get funded to go further with this. And it's like that's not the game. That is not the right. game. If you're trying to figure out the phenomenon, trying to figure out psi, you know, psionic stuff, all these different buckets they have that we know the government's done. Yeah. We have the papers now. Whether you know, even if even if like fifty percent of that is right and the other fifty percent is bullshit, that's still a lot of stuff to be on the table, man. It's a lot right, of weird right. things that they've that they've put on paper as having done, um, right. and you and I know it from other angles. You mm-hmm. know, there, it's yeah, it's in oh, there. Yeah. It's in the legends. It's been passed on with certain people. You yeah. know, I've gotten warnings. Really, you know, going, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, uh, you know, it it started off, you know, which I've I've mentioned before, but the whole bringing up the fungus as disclosure deal that immediately got kicked back, and and like you know, I'm talking daily assault. You know, whether wow, it was a bot man. doing it or somebody operator behind the bot, I don't really care. It was going on for long enough that some of the guys who were originally researching with me got driven out by wow. whoever that, whatever group that was, whoever that was, that we triggered something. We flipped some switch when we said fungus as disclosure. This person or group was like, no, do not talk mm-hmm. about that. Like getting threatened off of different boards and stuff, getting chased around different boards, wow. uh, getting data scraped, that kind of stuff, you know, research scraped. So whatever, you know, that happened. Uh, but yeah, more recently I've gotten kind of some, don't go there. Don't do this. You know, I, I'm like, Hey, you know, I've, like I poked around a certain couple questions, like, you know, our, our favorite boy, Jack Parsons, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of that stuff around that, you know, whole set of events. And, and, you know, I have my take on it. People don't like mm-hmm. it. I don't care. You know, I have my idea what happened. Um, just by looking at it on my own, I don't care. Like I, I said, I, I didn't go through other people's lists for this, but yeah. these are the things that have gotten me kicked back. And I think that that's kind of where some of these groups that have come towards me are like, well, maybe, um, you know, maybe not. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this, you know, that way. Um, but, you know, I think that you kind of steer you in a different, in the direction. That's that you know, right. That's what I got. Right I got steering, you know, cause I, I brought up the microtubule thing. It's mm-hmm. very obvious yeah. to me that, you know, if there's a, if there's a link to look at with psionics and consciousness, it's going to be something in like quantum effect. Uh, microtubules yeah. go in and out they yeah. geek hair, you know what I mean so they, yeah. they have some quantum activity start looking there for what that consciousness tie is you know I've found some ways that the body kind of looks like it heals itself via that process mm. you know it's like EM field changes which happen from DMT by the way outside of the mm. Sigma 1 stuff they, you know these these changes happen in your brain waves and you know, we've talked about a little bit how that would impact things down the line but right. you end up you know with scenarios where you can kind of maybe heal yourself. Like we've heard in all these legends and stories and things, but it's, it's a bio, it's a biomechanical or oh, I should say biological process. There's well, mechanisms electric, that are built electrical in. Electrical mechanical, right? It's a bio. Yeah. Well, there's the EM field changes, right? <laughs> yeah. And then that's where there's some interaction there with mitochondria and that's mitochondria right. do some things with signaling to, you know, different areas of the cell, mm-hmm. uh, microtubules in particular, and mm-hmm. they cause, 
coherence changes is the way that that would all you know work out by you get Change, by the time yeah, you get to right. the end of it. But that's a that's a thing that we've known for thousands and thousands of years. You sit down and meditate, or you sit down and pray hard enough, whatever your choice is there, um, and you know go to the oracle, whatever it might be. But the fact of the matter is, you're triggering something with yeah, that aspect of yourself that's right, and it's you know it's not just placebo. Mm -mm. Modern science termed it placebo. Right. That's the best they knew to call it, but they also are like, that's the most woo of anything that people get introduced <laughs> to. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like that's the woo that works for sure. You know, yeah, but yeah. but when you look under the hood, there's something to that. It's actually, yeah. like I say, this process, I think, again, going back to my whole model of DMT coming out of the pineal, pineal gland, now you've got this loop. So now you're pushing more DMT through that prayer meditation loop, the spirit molecule, going back down through to now you're at that healing stage again because you'd release that, change something with the way your EM field, your consciousness report, so to speak, is looking, and that's impacting things easier. Like you're able to kind of focus and see, you mm -hmm. know, um, like your body is, is what I really mean to say when, you, when I say you, yeah, but, yeah, you know, your, your body's able your to body see is. those signals and it's clean enough or cleaned up enough that it's able to take care of that activity. Yeah. So these are the things I want to pursue. I don't think that they're easily fundable. I do have someone now in the mix um, who I've got. Okay, so so this DMT thing we've been talking about and me seeing that, I've got that written out in a, a much broader mm -hmm. manner, uh, far more detailed than I'm getting ready to submit um, to have them take a look at. Um, mm -hmm. And this is someone who um, has – she uh, they, they've worked with some really high high names. They really know their stuff. Um, they're the one who, out of anyone I've interacted with so far, understands the crossroad of my science and phenomenon the best. Mm. And for this person to be the person saying that is like, um, I, you know, it feels like I kind of finally got there with some of, you know, getting through to somebody who I can uh, get these theories really confirmed with is what it's looking like now. That's so, right. yeah, yeah. So that's happening. Um, yeah. And this other thing, uh, I have another group. Kind of, it hasn't been bad. I've got to tell you, it has mm. not like the reach outs have not been bad, except for dead ending. Mm. And there was a there was a little bit before I jump to this last scenario that's happening. Um, there was a little bit of what I felt like was stick and carrot, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not calling anybody out on it. It's just how it felt, uh, how yeah, how yeah, it came yeah. across to me with, yeah. you know, write this thing, do this thing, and then kind of kept putting out the offer that this other party that had originally asked them to reach out to me is going to contact me. Or you know wants to talk to you, whatever. And it's like I get it. People are busy. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't take six or seven months. Okay, right. that's right. the thing. You know what I mean? I, I get busy schedules or busy schedules. I got one myself. Um, but you know that's 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 what kind of turned me off to that scenario that's been going on. Um, you know the person I'm putting these papers in front of. Um, they're extremely intelligent. They've they've got decades in clinical, and also decades in studying the phenomenon. Both. I can nice. say they're very, they're very well known, so it's it's that's Perfect. why I don't want to talk about exactly who it is right now. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get there. I'll make sure to <laughs> let everybody know. Believe me, yeah, you know, I am with the <laughs> loud mouthing of things. Uh, <laughs> I'll so keep this, bugging you until you say. Hey. Oh, of course, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you'll you'll be one of the first six or seven yeah. to know anyway. So um, this last group is where it gets really interesting yeah. because I, you know you you and I've talked enough, and you know for anyone out there that's that's just catching me, like I I started all this work. Everything that John and I are talking about started with medical for me because yeah. I have some predispositions. Um, my wife has some predispositions, caused some losses to us, and I took that to heart. And I said, well, you know, if I can take what I went through and help other people in some facet uh, with what I've what gone through, do. what I found, right. you know, right, yeah. just do that. And yeah. I've been doing it for free. Like, no one's paid me for three years, dude. Like, I'm yeah. self-funded. I've been doing my own work. I've been nose down with this for this whole time. Right. Um and I'm not saying I'm right 100% of everything because there's always room, but uh, it's pretty solid. And now there's a, a, a large group on the medical side that's really starting to look at what I've, I've been saying about, you know, like cryptococcus being maybe part of what happened with SARS-CoV-2, like this mm -hmm. cross engagement thing going on you and I've talked about. One yeah. starts the party, one brings the big bat, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's that whole deal. Yeah. Um, so they're looking at that. The cancer theory I put up. That's actually how this other group found me is that cancer right. theory I put up about a year ago or so on Twitter. Um, got some headway there, you know, got some kickback too, as usual. But I still think it's right, at least right enough for it to be looked at. And they well, do too. Dude, I mean, I, like, so I didn't, I, you know, I bitched out and I, I won't do the whole entire protocol, but I just started taking NAC and bromelain 
and I drink pomegranate juice and I'm taking uh, uh, oregano oil. It's oregano oil with the, you know, I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, just that, right? Yeah. Look, I, I haven't had allergies since I started talking to you. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> and so my doctor started telling him about it. This is like, and I've told you this, I told it was about a year now. He said, what the, what the hell are you doing? I told him, taking NAC, 1,000 milligrams. And then like, I'm, I'm on the way low of all of this shit, right? I'm taking 1,000 milligrams NAC a day. Take bromelain, which is like nothing, you know, and I'm you know, sporadically taking uh, the, um, you know, the oregano oil, right? You know, maybe twice, three times a week, something like that. Mm. And um, like all of my, all my blood work is just fucking golden. Everything's great. Everything's perfect, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and he's just like, what do you do? And I told him, so he started taking it. He dropped 30 pounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he started, and, it, and then he got his wife doing it, you know, and, she, and now he's telling his patients. Mm -hmm. to do it and they're like yeah. and and he's like dude i'm seeing all these things with the people that are uh normally taking like blood pressure that's not taking it anymore they're taking you know all this other shit that they, they all these all these pills that these people have been taking for you know high blood pressure or you know like uh um, you know like all this stuff and he's like just they're just not taking it anymore. amazing right yeah you know it's uh it's wild. And like you There's, tell me, it's just, it's just fucking garden vegetables. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. Right. You know, that's, that's just, it's not anything crazy, man. No, but I think that, you know, on the deeper level though, you know, cause that whole thing, it's like, it should be obvious, man. How long have yeah. we been around these vegetables? They were probably, <laughs> they were there before we were what we are, you know, for the, for the most part. So yeah. they've been around, you yeah. know, again, it's like useful components, you know, and, and you're, you mentioned a bunch of them, you like palm and, and oregano yeah. has got carvacrol in it. You know, all these things. Carvacrol. Really... That's I, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, carvacrol is huge. Yeah, it's yeah. It's right. it, yeah, yeah. there's so much that that does. See, and I got yeah. cracked on by by a couple people that this was you know all stuff that's related to like um like mental health care stuff like mm. natural mental health care and whatnot. But yeah. it's it, like the compounds. But when you go and look, and you, you can look at it, you know, for yourself, anybody out there, you can just pull up PubMed and put in any of these compounds, you know, mm -hmm. the oregano oil, the pomegranate, the black seed oil, uh, all these things like that. And look at what they're doing. And there, there's stuff like, you know, um, and this is in the data on PubMed. So this is not, yeah. that's the other thing too, is like when people hear how I, how I talk about these findings, they're, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm a research scientist, I'm not a lab scientist. So I, I'm looking mm -hmm. through the, you know, I'm doing the algebra from what people have already put on the table. That's all I'm right, doing. Right, so right. when you start looking at this stuff, it, it's like it's clocking so many things. You know, like Carvacrol, they've shown um, that it keeps HIV from fusing to the wow. cells. Dude, I mean, what? That's a vegetable. It's, such, <laughs> it's so common. I mean, you go to the supermarket. How much? Uh, what? What? I mean, there's so many things that have oregano, oregano. on a regular yeah, basis, right? Pasta. It's that common. <laughs> you know, and, and like, like thymoquinone yeah. from black seed oil. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those ones that it does this stuff to your liver mm -hmm. and like hepatic protection kind of stuff that it straightens out the way that you process just about everything that comes through for a toxin. I didn't realize this, this is just a weird decide, but I didn't realize that in humans, it's like but the only organ I think that you could literally cut in half or a third in a in your liver will grow back. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it's it's pretty durable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it really you is. Know? You know? <laughs> like nobody knows that. It's like you know, it's like lizards lose their tail or their arm; they grow it back. And yeah, no big. Yep. The humans, we can regrow our liver. I'm like, yeah, nice. and, <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's one of those things too, where that's a huge vector for what gets clamped. Yeah, oh, what yeah. you know by these diseases, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of the first things you really see for implications of the, of the types of disease yeah, yeah. I look at is liver. The liver starts to yeah, starts yeah. acting up right then. Right? Yep, yeah. liver damage. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. Sorry, you know, I was just on the side. I had to mention it since we're talking. No, no, it, but yeah, that's yeah. the thing is like, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, it's another point of knowledge that people don't pay attention to. Right. Really. You know, uh, no, and that's that's does. where this this medical stuff that I started off with. Right. Like I didn't expect this is gonna land anywhere near phenomenon stuff, man. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? I was like I'm just trying to like figure out your physical stuff and help everybody yeah. else too. At the same yeah, time. I was I was psyched to not have like a dozen things I dealt with on a daily basis anymore. Right. Just like you're saying, yeah. they just go away. Yeah. And, and it's not like it's hard. 
No, and it was so, weird because it wasn't like I, you know, it wasn't like one of those things we just notice either. You know, it was just like, oh shit, I haven't taken Claire in, in like two years. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's, oh, it yeah. wasn't like a like oh I'm trying to cure that. Like it didn't even cross my mind that that was part of it at all. Like I didn't have any correlation that that and that was with you know any anywhere near those two things together. But then yeah, and if if you do it right, it sticks too. That's mm-hmm. the thing that people don't realize is like you know do these improvements. Everyone's like, oh, you got to keep taking it forever. It's like, no, you no, 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 really no, wean myself. You, off, not if you do man. it right, dude. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean. I and that's really on both sides. It. You know, like yeah. I, I've been pretty much steady three years with the the whole protocol outlay. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. having, I, I take breaks, kind of as we recommend or not mm-hmm. recommend, but we've kind of like agreed to in the group, so to speak. Um, yeah. So you know, we kind of have this trend of taking breaks, checking the waters, making sure things are sticking. Um, and I've done a couple one month breaks by this point now, and I took a, a two month break just to check, mm-hmm. just to be like, yeah, is this yeah, sticking? Yeah, yeah. Are yeah. all these improvements that I'm feeling that are and, like, and it's like were they? scraping? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like scraping the barnacles off, dude. It mm-hmm. really is. Or like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I you know, no, that's a good analogy. Taking though, time honestly. out of the body, it's like removing time from your yeah. body. And I, we've had a lot of people talking about that recently too, um, in my circle where. You know, does it? Does everyone else notice this, this, and this are happening? It's usually related to like, you know, people feeling like they've de-aged like a decade or two, mm-hmm. and getting well, comments from people. What's that guy's name? Brian Johnson, the guy that's like spent more money than anybody on earth to try to like de-age himself. Yep. Uh, yep. So like, I, I started looking, and somebody posted his protocol, like what he takes, <laughs> and it's like half of the shit that's on the end. It's it's on oh, the protocol. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like NAC. It's like half of it, man. It's like really, oh no shit. Yeah. That guy's taking way more NAC than feasible too, like a day. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. you can push it. You can min max like that, you know, get, get way yeah. up in the numbers, but dude, like here's the thing. And, you know, I think that this is why the protocol that, that we kind of mess around with uh, works as well as it does is because it's just, it's so low, like, uh-huh. like low approach, you know, like keep it kind of steady. You know, and we had someone in the group pop up that did some, some number crunching, um, on the chemistry and mm-hmm. you know the amount that we kind of have in the listings is enough to keep saturation so mm-hmm. you don't have to take a lot but it's this, just a steady low amount it's like mm-hmm. it's like microdosing oregano all day you know what i mean kind <laughs> of deal but but that's really you know that's what i think is doing the trick yeah, is, is you know it's like you say like these things are mm-hmm. kind of changing and you don't they sneak up on you so gradual turnarounds you know but those repairs they're they're in there now Dude, and that's you what's know. red. I mean, you know, when you think about it, it's probably something that we've historically, um, as a species, probably just walked away from at some point, right? Because, like, everybody, all these, like you said, they were here before we were, right? So everybody, like, every day you're just going to eat oregano just because it's there and it's part of your diet or whatever else that in part of this. Food. Like, it's all part of your culture or your diet or your, you know, whatever, religion, for God's sakes, anything, right? Yeah. You're gonna do it because it's part of the routine and you just did it. And then everybody, you know, disper- you know, disperses and you know, regional and you know, maybe the shit doesn't grow here, whatever, right? But I mean, if, if you think about it, it's all natural, right? So it could be that we just walked away from it at some point. I think that's on the note, you know, pretty much on the money. Um there's there's groups that have legends built around it too, dude. You know, like you look yeah. at um you mentioned Ireland earlier on something with yeah. the genetic stuff, but um, you know, the Tuatha Day legends buried in there. There's this legend of this dude who was the best, like the best healer they'd mm-hmm. ever seen. Uh, he was a better healer than his father, who was the previous best healer. You know, so there's this whole <laughs> budding heads jealousy thing going on, though. Um, yeah. But this dude, his son, uh, he he could do all this crazy stuff, uh, like regrew the king's arm from like just a stump essentially wow. all this thing that's in these legends and uh his father got pissed so he ends up killing him it takes a lot of work dude so you know he kills his own kid um yeah. and when he gets buried um in the site where he got buried this tree i guess is where he like this whole hilltop deal where he got buried all these plants spring up and it's one for each day of the year that are these healing plants and it had indications and names and what they were and everything else. Okay. So this wow. is what, what the gift to the world was after he died and went up or whatever. Um, and his dad found out and he's still such, such a jealous jackass that he out of spite scrambles the names 
and scrambles the effects of all 365 plants so that we wouldn't know. So somebody in that legend literally took action against us having that knowledge base. You know, you can see that as different ways too. You know, it's like the twisted kings you hear about in some of those other legends from Ireland where like the good king, everything grew straight and grew strong and everything else. And the twisted king who had bad intent, you know, it's coded in that everything twisted up to kind of meet his, mm-hmm. is it his output that's doing that? You know what I mean? Who knows? Right. You, know, you can go way down that whole rabbit hole, but this, this is in there. The like you're saying. The Tower where that makes everybody have different languages. And everything right. Works. And then you forget. Yeah. You have this right. thing with the, the species born with amnesia deal. Mm-hmm. Now, way back to what we were saying about cryptococcus at the beginning of the show, and it gets into that CA1 group of neurons where we build our memories. And they'll give wipe the fuck out. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're literally born with amnesia. And I think, you know, I was thinking about this right before we got on the call. Um, because we have that study that's out there you can find with the amniotic fluid exposure and stuff as to like how early this stuff would get in. Wow. And I can't see anywhere in that data they even checked for cryptococcus. Probably don't. They probably didn't, right. It's like some aflatoxins and some other stuff that showed up in there on the on the official read. But I don't even know if they would have known to look because it was I a would. slightly older study. And some of that detection, especially that you know that level, would you know, maybe have been something that's been advanced a bit since then. So this could be literally the, the the cork that or the uncorking that starts the whole party in our body for disease, mm-hmm. you know those initial attacks, you know, uh, right down to to gut trip to fan metabolism we talked about up through brain issues that these things are causing, you know, um, degenerative diseases, you know, it's like Alzheimer's Inflama- is one. All the inflammation. That's I mean that's gonna be the major part of it. I mean, inflammation yeah, just destroys right. the human body. Well, you know, like okay, so. Uh, there was an article maybe a couple of days ago that popped up where the big deal with Alzheimer's mm-hmm. is that the inflammation of the brain, right? Like, right. And you can't clear, you can't clear your cerebrospinal fluid. There's supposed mm-hmm. to be a process at night that happens where you kind of, your so brain kind of washes itself. Yeah. Well, it literally pumps fluid, right? It pumps mm-hmm. clean fluid in and like washes out bad gunked mm-hmm. up proteins like amyloids let's say those kind of things um, that's supposed to happen it's a natural process it's this whole area well the choroid plexus you've looked at that enough this is that whole section that mm-hmm. uh, dr nolan talks about a lot of choroid plexitis and whatnot that we've kind of kicked around that's that area that's the area that handles that exchange that you're supposed to be going through every every night mm-hmm. while you sleep and, and if it doesn't you're probably just you, now you're building up amyloids now you're building up mm-hmm. junk proteins junk just garbage that isn't getting flushed. And mm-hmm. here's what happens with cryptococcus. It actually goes to these epidemic cells and causes them to be inflamed. And those cells are the ones that exchange that cerebrospinal fluid out of your blood plasma. You know, that kind so of process. That the whole. Plasma exchange. Right. And then the paravascular spaces, which are those little gaps you see around that choroid plexus, they get bigger. And we mm-hmm. talk about that. We talk about that in autism. We talk about that in schizophrenia. We talk about mm-hmm. that with experiencers that there's changes to the choroid area, and all. And it's you know these these areas are larger in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Choroid plexitis is the other term you'll hear for it, and that's. I mean, I can show you a dozen articles that all trace back to cryptococcus matching every single piece of that right down to the astroglial section where it causes the inflammation on their end that pops that blood brain barrier to begin with, John. So it's all there. Yeah, you know, this is again. It's just all you need to know how to look at it and line it up. Yeah, Seth, you're you're amazing, dude. Thanks for doing hey. this. Yeah, of course, man. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Thanks for having me again. You're it's always, always fun, dude. welcome. You're yeah. always welcome. I've been slacking this summer. I've been I've been uh, you know trying to reel it back and you know I've been writing a book for the past six months, nine months, ten months, nice. whatever it is now. I'm trying to yep. get that thing done, and you know, uh, you know, I've just been. Uh, Kind of sitting back and watching the uh, the community eat itself. <laughs> yeah, I don't comment a so, lot. You know I me. Mean? No, yeah, no, you know, no, I, I'm I, just trying to, trying to step a, back and you know yep. to add some positivity yep. and everything. But yep. but I appreciate yeah, I mean, you I'm, jumping on, dude. I'm just fucking rad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And like I say, dude, you know, I, um, I'm easy to get a hold of. So not just for you, but for other people. If you have any questions or anything like that, you want to just hit me up. Yeah, um, and one day I'll get out of you. Well, who these people are that are after you. I mean, yeah, you that. know, I feel like it's getting to a point where I'll be able to talk about it a little more directly. Um, yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, they're just, not doing any fucking favors for you. So, I mean, at the moment, yeah, it feels kind of that way, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So, what are you doing so, any favors for them? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, uh, 
I get it. I get yeah, it. you know, it, it's one of those things where I, I got to make sure. You know, I want. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. It's not like I'm holding cards or playing anything a certain way, but I'm just waiting to see. Like, what are these guys doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sitting back here with. Go ahead. No, I'd just be interested to see from you know this yeah. whole time to see how it plays out. I know what I know mm-hmm. is the thing. So it's like whatever they're doing, it's not really affecting what I'm doing. I'm still moving. I'm moving my stuff along the way. I need to move it along. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, but believe me, I. Yeah, and on the other bullshit. So that's good. That yeah. So that's yeah. Luckily, that's laid off. You yeah. know, I, like I said, I've, I've got a, I've had a couple people on Twitter that had some issues here and there from just misunderstanding things, you know, literal complete right. misunderstandings, um, bad interpretations and whatnot. But besides yeah. that, it's been pretty tame, dude. You know what I good, mean? The good, good, the good. Telegram thing's going good. You know, we had good. a moment where all that weird stuff that's going on with their thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, where they got thrown the, in jail. And friends, yeah, so yeah. you know, of course, everyone in there is like, okay, how do I back all this stuff up? We've got like, yeah. you know, a year of knowledge that's all. Cool yeah, with you, the group and you guys figured that so, out, right? Hopefully, you figured that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of spreading it out more. So, okay. yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's ways to Do back that. it up. Yeah, we mm-hmm. did find that. So, there's a way to kind of back up long, long I, threads. I, I might, I may have some. I, I might have some ideas to help you on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. well, let's chat about that because I want to make sure to have that backed up. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, dude. A lot of studies some scra- and like some scrapers that we can probably hook up. Yeah, okay. Scrape that data. Yep. Yep. We'll work that out. It's probably not but, above board, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, it needs to be. It needs to be maintained. You know, They're scraping. Somebody else is scraping it anyway. So I'm yeah, exactly. Dude, might as well keep it for it. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might as well. Yep. Dude, dude, thanks right, so man. much, man. But I'm gonna bail. All right. Of course, we'll catch you're up always soon. welcome back, man. Thanks right. again. Yep. Later, John. See ya.